Today, my featured guest is Sherry Ward, and she is the founder and CEO of Square Tree Publishing. Sherry is a seasoned publisher, like a little paprika, little spices. <laughs> and over the, the 10 years in publishing, her authors have been featured on numerous media outlets, including CNN, <coughs> excuse me, something in my throat there, <laughs> Fox News, The Dr. Drew Show, and The OC Register. Now, Square Tree Publishing has helped give authors a voice from local task force conferences to the United Nations. As a film producer and with over 20 interviews on national TV shows herself, Sherry is uniquely qualified in production development and podcasting. Sherry has also been featured on Good Morning America, The Home Family Show, and media all over the world. She is also executive producer of Infinity System, a Western sci-fi pilot to be released in 2023. Hold your breath, Startup Woo! Nation. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> you know it was, but it is. Sherry Ward, welcome to your first 100K Top 100 podcast in entrepreneurship. Go ahead and fill in some of the gaps in that intro, would you? We just made our first movie, so we're going to make it, we made it into a pilot, so we're going for a book series, and then we're going to leverage that into a movie, so I am so excited. We got into four different film festivals so far, and we're up for awards on all of them. Two of them, we already landed the awards, so I'm super excited to launch this new phase of my life in the business, so. Whoa. It's I'm like this, this hidden creative part of you that's getting released and the world's accepting it, not rejecting it. Oh! Yes, and I love it because it's a Western sci-fi. So like I'm a Trekkie fan, so it's fun. Western oh. and sci-fi, you can't get any better than that. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What was the one Will Smith did back in the day with the train? Oh, that was oh, Western yeah, sci-fi, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. That one was cool too. It had all the like technology and innovations, robots and stuff going on in the Western. Yep, that's exactly it. So, all right, Sherry, welcome to the show. We're gonna talk about business today, okay? But before we do, let's get personal. People before profits, people. Okay, okay. Take a minute, share something personal about you that very few people in your business life actually know. I worked for Rockwell International um, and I helped during the space station days and I was there when the Challenger blew up. Word. I was there that day. Wow. So it's pretty crazy. Yeah, for sure. You know, the uh, Warren men, my last name's Warren, the Warren men um, have three generations uh, of working on space shuttles here in uh, Cape Canaveral, Florida. Oh, interesting. Yeah. My granddad, yeah. Uh, his lead project was the uh, lunar module that landed on the moon. Um, mm. So he was the lead yeah. on that. And uh, yeah, pretty amazing stuff. You know, I got a lot of brilliant men in my family and then it didn't fall to me. <laughs> <sighs> Frustration. We can't pick it. All right. So thank you for sharing that. Let's get into business. You're running a publishing company, but this is not your first company by any means. No, my had first a, radio. <laughs> yeah, you've had ha, Western sci-fi. Good one. I saw that. <laughs> um, you've had a few failures in business. Just a few. Probably seven. Probably seven, eight, eight of them. Girl, you're catching up with me, man. I got 10. Let's go. We're Let's putting, go. We're yeah. putting notches yeah. in our belt. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. I got scars on my arm. Yeah, it's like yeah. another yeah. one bites the dust. Yeah. Uh, so what was the biggest one, the biggest failure? Maybe the one that like gave you the most head trash. I we It was during that uh, building boom where everybody was remodeling their home right before the crash in, in 2008. And... I started a kind of like Angie's List. I don't know if you know Angie's mm -hmm. List. Angie's List went online. I didn't go online. I did the same exact thing as her offline mm -hmm. and tried to push that thing up the hill for seven years and finally threw in the towel. Wow. Um, Sherry's List never made the list. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny it that, never made it <laughs> it was never sherry's list <laughs> that's <laughs> right Auntie's list. yeah so biggest <laughs> takeaway from that failure is what what'd you learn um know when to walk away 
Yeah. Know when to fold them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, you hear two schools of thought on this show, many business shows, and that's, you know, don't quit, don't give up, keep pushing, keep going. Yeah, yeah. And then the other school of thought is, hey, you got to know when to quit and give up and pivot and shift because it's just not working. You got the wrong market, the wrong, you know, uh, time in, in the market, whatever, the wrong avatar, so many different factors. What was the biggest factor for you? Was it that you pursued the wrong platform, so to speak? You went yeah, offline and exactly. she went online? Yep. Yep. And so now I, uh, the, especially this last year, we've went completely online and it's blown everything up in a good way. And okay. so I've learned a lesson. It's like, go online, go online, people get on the line, pick up the phone. No, I'm kidding. All right, <laughs> Sherry. So talk to us about this. You started a publishing company after seven failed businesses. What happened? Like, how did you transition into starting that? Where did you get the guts, the courage? Why didn't you fail, feel like a failure, a loser from all those previous ones like so many people do? Like, tell us about that. What was going on in your head? I felt like uh, God had me in a wilderness season for 14 years. And coming out of that, he said, I want you to write a book. He said, write a book. He said, um, write the book, write the book, write the book. You have a portal to show up for. And if you don't write the book, you're going to miss it. I had no idea what a portal was, but I thought I don't want to miss it. So I wrote for about 10 hours a day, three for three months and got it out. And then after I got it out, everybody kept saying, how do I do it? How do I do it? And that was, that was when this whole self publishing thing had just started taking off. So this was 10 years ago. I mean, now, you know, every Tom, Dick and Harry has opened up a shop and called themselves a publisher, but this was like, you know, 10, 11 years ago. And, um, so I did, and I, I learned a ton and, but I still, even when I did that, I still had a lot of head trash. I had a lot of poverty mindset, which unfortunately is very prevalent in the church. Um, I just had to break through a lot of my own head stuff, especially coming off of all the failed stuff as well. Yeah. Any, uh, really cool tactics you use that worked for you? to eliminate that head trash fast? Cause I know a lot of listeners are dealing with it right now. I found Dr. Amanda Hellman, who's phenomenal. She, uh, she's become my personal coach for the mindset stuff. And I've actually brought her onto the company now and she helps our authors get through their own mind trash as well. And it's, she gets to the root in like five minutes and just pulls that sucker right out. And it's like, how did you do that? <laughs> so it's not counseling. It's not like you've said before, it's not sharing your problems forever. Um, just through the Holy Spirit, she just taps right into that and pulls that root right out of, of what's causing it. That's so cool. There's a uh, lat an Italian word, and I'm not Italian. I'm Greek, but like there's a there's an Italian word called sedate, sedate. Yeah, yeah. Which means healed uh, from the root, healed from the root. Yeah. And uh, so many of us, we need to be healed from the root. And God's the one that does the healing. He uses humans as His hands. Yeah. Um, so that's great. She was able to do that for you. I get to do that, you know, with elite men in my coaching and really powerful stuff. So if you're out there and you're struggling right now and you're doing it by yourself, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the problem. God made us as communal people. We need each other. That's why we're so different. We're so different. Otherwise, we all be the same and perfect. It'd be great. Not and then we kill each other off because it could only be one. <laughs> 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 Some of you got that reference. That was a good movie. All right, uh, Sherry, let's. Uh, you got rid of the head trash. You hired a coach to do it. God gave you, after this long season of waiting and failing and etc., God gave you a clear assignment like go write a book. You did it. You wrote 10 hours a day. Immediately, my question came up What were you writing about? Did God tell you what to write about? How did you have 10 uh, hours a day of content to write about? My, the 14 years in the wilderness <laughs> and what I learned. So it wasn't so much, you know, a memoir. Or it was more just lessons learned in the wilderness. And that the wilderness is actually a good thing. It's the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my entire life. Mm. But it's when I 
heard his voice like I never have before. Mm. Um, and the good things that can come out of the wilderness when we go through hard times. Yeah, I agree so much. I've been in the wilderness myself and, uh, that's where I met God, like in real relationship yeah. when, I ha- when I had nothing and no one. Right. And it's like sitting in solitude is the game changer. And s- we hate silence as a culture, as a society, we love noise and distraction. And some of us, so many of us as business owners were like, well, I try to pray, but what's the point? It never works anyway. It's like, yeah, because you won't get silent. Mm-hmm. God mm-hmm. shows up in the whisper, the whisper, mm-hmm. right? You hear the whisper in the wilderness. So that's great. You did that. What'd you name the book? A Journey Out of the Wilderness. <laughs> A Journey Out of the Wilderness. Don't overthink it, people. Keep it clear. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it clear. What's it about? You know, A Journey Out of the Wilderness. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, so you, you publish this book, you self-publish it. Mm-hmm. And uh, is it an instant overnight success? Or do you got to like market this thing and do the grueling work that so many people have to do as new authors? I, it wasn't like an overnight hit. I mean, I took it to a conference and I had about a hundred copies. So that conference was international. So it kind of went out all over. Um, But I, there's, there's reasons for writing a book more than just money. And I think a lot of times we write from hurt to heal, to help. And so sometimes I feel like God wants us to write a book because he's healing us. And we don't always want to hear that because we want the money, we want the marketing, we want this, that, and the other. But there's a lot of hurts that we just need to be raw with. And then once we get past that in our writing, then we write to heal. And then after we write to heal, then we write to help. And so those are the three things. I got that from Lindsay Hart's a uh, good friend of mine that does book marketing. And I really believe in that because that was kind of the journey I went on. Mm. Once I wrote it, my friend read it as a beta reader. She's like, oh, no, 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 no. It's got way too much pain in here. You you got to get, you got to find healing out of this before you release this. There's just no hope in it, you know. Mm. That is so powerful, so powerful. There's many people that... Uh, you know, I meet personally, and uh, they're out trying to speak on stages about their hurt, about their struggle. But you could clearly see they fully have they haven't fully healed yet, and you yeah. know that because some of them just they start bawling when they're talking about the pain because it's still very much there. It's not like a right. distant me- memory that they heal from, and they're just you know peaceful about it. They have peace around it. You could tell there's no peace there, so there's yeah. no hope yeah. in it in their message yeah. and and yeah. god wants hope right we all want right. hope uh right. so thank you for bringing that point up so for all you listeners out there how does this apply to you well whatever god has you up to telling his story told through your life well i agree with that it's like he wants to use the hurt the suffering right jesus experienced it that's why he came mm-hmm. and chose suffering as the vehicle for salvation and he wants to take that hurt and, and heal you from it in order to give hope, right, to, right. to others and help right. them help them through it. Um, so make sure you see it all the way through. So even if it, it hurts a little more, go through it because you got to heal. Otherwise, you can't help. You just, you yeah, really can't. You can't. That's, that's what it comes mm-hmm. down to. All right. So you wrote that book. Um, then people started saying, hey, how do I do this? And what, you had an instant business overnight or Pretty much, pretty much. And, and I learned a lot. I partnered with authors. So my, the way and the structure that I structured it was partnering with my authors as far as, you know, rev shares and royalties and all of that. And I went all in on the marketing. One of my authors, we helped launch a ministry for kids that were um, moms that had kids on drugs and alcohol So we ended up getting like 5 million views on Facebook. So, you know, we did that whole model for a while and then God shifted. And so I think it's really important to mind the shifts and to be aware when God wants you to pivot and to be okay to do it messy. And that's something that, you know, I was very perfectionist, wanted to get it right. So wanted to get it right, especially for God. You know, it's even more when it's like, do it right for God, you know. Um, but there's, there's power in the mess and power in the pivot. And so I had to make a pivot and 
he told me, he said, you're on a runway and you've got your business plane. And he said, I want you to take off as fast as you can in this new direction. And I want you to keep going. And when you hit the end of the runway, don't stop, keep going. And I said, well, that's easy for you to say, God, like I've got a half built airplane. He says, that's okay. We'll build it in the air as we fly it. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so it takes a, a whole new level of faith um, to build your business in the air and to, you know, I can literally at times feel like, oh, that part of the plane just came together in the air, <laughs> you know, and oh, that makes sense now. And, and um, so you've got to go for it, even when you don't have all the pieces in play. All right. I hope that encourages you, Startup Nation. Like I'm, I'm picturing, you know, you got the you got the sardine can, a part of the plane, right? The big metal tube, but it's got no wings. And you're like, God, I got no wings. He's like, just go launch. I'll be your wings. And you're like, <laughs> I don't know if you will. <laughs> and my friend prayed for me one time. She said, as long as she goes, I see you in that plane that's like not even built yet. And she goes, but I see you with the, um, the headset on mm -hmm. and that's your headset to God. And she said, that's all you need. All you need is that headset with God on that airplane. I agree with that. It's scary, though. It really is. Ah, but then it gets less scary every time you you take off. You're like, oh, I didn't die. <laughs> I didn't kill anyone. I was going to say that. I was going to say that. It's super scary. But then once you do it over and over and over again, it becomes kind of fun. Yeah, it's an adventure with God. Yeah. Yeah. Like for real. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm there, girl. I get it. I get it. All right. So, uh you launched the sardine and uh, did, it, <laughs> did it crash? Um, you know, some things worked, some things didn't work, but we pivoted and changed and now it's doing really, really well. Okay, got it. You're over six figures. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, listen, the majority of entrepreneurs never hit the 100K mark. They just don't. Um, tell us the, uh, what was the, number one marketing strategy that you've done with this business that worked this last year we started doing facebook challenges and i i fought it for a long time because i'm i'm very anti if everybody's doing it i don't want to jump mm -hmm. on the bandwagon so i'm not that kind of person and so i kind of fought doing challenges for a long time but dr amanda came into my life and she's like let's do a challenge i'm like okay if you help me and we do it together i'll do it and so we launched and we've already served over 4,000 authors this last year, just through the Facebook challenges. Look at that. Look at that. What is that going to project out for your business in 2023? Those 4,000 authors you've served? Um, probably a half a million. Okay. Yeah. You know, that was the most unenthusiastic. <laughs> I was yeah. I'm sorry. I was like, I'm a math teacher. I used to be a math teacher. So I'm, I'm working the numbers in my head going, yeah, if we double it, then it's like, you were, you were, that was my math brain coming out right now. You know, you have some of my audience <laughs> screaming at you right now. Like, oh my gosh, if I made $500,000 this year, it would change my entire life, my family, my children. And she's like, well, you know. Maybe 500,000. <laughs> You're killing us. <laughs> that was great. All right. We got to bring That's levity so to the seriousness. But you know what? I will tell you, like, once you start breaking out that poverty mindset, at that point, it's just zeros. It really is. Like, it really, when, you say, like when you say it's just zeros, you mean it doesn't really matter to you anymore. Is that what you mean? It, it's, it's. Yeah, it's like once you break through, it's it's just becomes monopoly, you know, monopoly money. It's mm -hmm. it, it really it it shifts. I'm I'm really shifting. I have I have a ways to go. I have not arrived by any means, um, but what I have broken through so far has been amazing as far as just seeing the dollars different. Like it's a whole different level of faith when you're standing in faith for the utility bill or, mm. you know, your office bill or whatever it is. It's a whole nother level to have 10 employees, you know, and hundreds of thousands of dollars in, you know, that you have to come up with 
for payroll, you know, it's, it's different, you know, it, and it's just zeros at that point. You know, the faith is the faith. It's just zeros. <laughs> it's a good perspective. I agree completely. Uh, let's see. Hmm. 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 What do I want to know? I'm going to be selfish here. Go for what, it. What do I want to know about this? All right. I just self-published another one, Prosper. Okay. Prosper, how to grow your business and profits exponentially without failing at home. Without mm -hmm. failing at home, right? Because um, I speak to the elite men that are making seven to nine figures, crushing it. They've mastered their industry, their craft, but they're going home and failing. Failing their wives, failing their kids. I call it the Tom Brady effect. Cause that's relevant and people get that right now. Right. And he's mm -hmm. just the name that goes on it for right now. He's the current failed male hero. Um, but there'll be another one next year and another one after that, another one after that. Um, I know how to put these books out. I don't know how to market them for anything. <laughs> right. From a self publishing standpoint. Now, some people are listening like Joseph, you're like, a, you do marketing, you do sales, you've, you've run successful business. Yeah. But I'm not good at most of it. Like I'm just not. And I, and marketing my own thing. It, pff, I just, right. It's not a thing. Is it? I don't, I don't like it. So what would you say to a new guy like me? Who's like, I'm not a new guy as far as self publishing, but yeah, I've never knocked one out of the park as far as marketing them. So I just put out more and whoever gets to them, gets to them. They're available on my sites, whatever. But I'm not out there like getting on stages, doing media appearances and stuff because I don't feel the drive or the desire in my heart from God to go do that. Am I wrong? Is there another way? Um, well, the biggest thing I could tell you is a cover. You really have to pay the money for a cover and not do five for, I don't know where you're getting your covers, but the cover is everything. And cause in two seconds you could tell it's almost like a movie trailer. Have you ever seen like the poster and right away you knew? Yes. So like, I want to see it. I don't want to see it. Yeah. Immediately, you know, and we actually, for the movie, we paid a lot of money and had a top level guy that's done some, you know, high level sci-fi stuff to do our posters. And so when we went to these film festivals, that was the very first thing they said is like, oh my gosh, I want to see it. And it's like, they knew nothing about it. All they saw was this like fancy poster. So it's the same thing with the with the books and it's the cover. Um, that's the number one thing I could say as far as the physical product. The other thing that I would um, push back and challenge you, because I know you like that. I listen to the podcast. <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah. she knows me. <laughs> um, you said that you just recently acquired a radio station and you were like, wah, wah about it. Kind of so, like you with the 500,000. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Touche. Yeah. yeah. So you're kind of like, wah, wah about it. So if you're wah, wah about your books and that's going to come out too. Wow. Okay. Startup nation. I just got called out by my guest. Oh, it stings. <laughs> it stings a little. But you know what? Sherry, you're right. You're absolutely right. My wife called me out recently about the radio station. I heard. We're, we're, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're out fundraising, you know? And I'm speaking to all these people I know that are very well, all, well to do, right? And uh, I'm just thinking, like, they got play money, like, and they believe in the cause of what we're doing and stuff, but they don't say yes. They don't give money. They don't. And I'm just like, what's missing? And she's like, it's probably the way you're coming across. You're coming across just nonchalant about it. Like, ah, God will work it out. You know, he gave me the station. I don't know what I'm doing. It's what, here's what we need, blah, blah, blah. She's like, there's nothing there. There's no enthusiasm. There's no excitement. She's like, maybe you need to shift to more messaging. Like, hey, God, give me this radio station. I didn't want it. But man, now that I have it, I see the potential with this thing. And here's what we're going to do with it. We're going to expand mm -hmm. God's kingdom. Here's how we're going to do it. Here's some shows we have in the in the production lineup. And I need you to help out. You want to be part of what God's doing right now? Let's go. I need $500,000. Let's go. You know, and just invite people that way. And it's like, wow, what a difference. That's Your like energy diff just shifted. Oh, completely. Which right is going to shift even, theirs. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to shift yeah. their energy. It's like a book cover, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, or a movie <laughs> cover. 
It's like, I don't want to see that. I don't want to support that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to read that. Right. Or I do. So yeah, that's my 2023 as I'm shifting the way I present what God's got me doing. I'm going I'm to find the enthusiasm. Let's go. Startup Nation, I challenge you to do the same. Okay, I'll do my own homework. You do yours. What do you got, Sherry? What you could also do is, you know, for potential clients, you could have a book that would like be a precursor to your coaching and you give it out for free because for businesses, that's very, very powerful. It's the new business card. So if you give out that book as a precursor and it's not really the money maker because mm-hmm. books in itself, you know, usually don't make a ton of money. Right. It's what they're in the funnel, you know, your sales mm-hmm. funnel. So if you have a precursor book to get them excited and to build you as the expert, then you just start giving them away. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. why I created this book prosper because it's written for my elite, uh, business owner guy. It speaks to him. It, it yells at him the way he wants to be called out. Yeah, on yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, Hey, congratulations, brother. You're doing what 1% of men ever do. And yet you're failing. Like, that's kind of how it starts out. And he's like, what? Like, I got the Rolex. I got the Bentleys. What do you mean I'm failing? I don't fail. It's like, yeah, you're failing at home. Let's talk about mm-hmm. it, right? And we get right into yeah. it. All right. I'm asking you because you just took a shot at me and I welcomed it. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, you know, I'm bleeding out just a little bit. All right. So cover. Uh, when you see this cover for Prosper, yes or no? You want to read it? You don't want to read it? No. She's nodding her head. No, folks. <laughs> Now, now, for some of you out there that have written books, this is like your nightmare experience when you you hold up your cover and someone goes, "Yeah, I don't think I would want to read that at all." Tell me, Sherry, I invite you in with feedback. Why not? What would, what do you like? What's just eh? It That's looks the wrong ge- it looks generic. It looks generic, people. You need something very studly macho for your guys. Studly macho. All you right. know what I mean. I do, I do. This you is got, my... you got like strong men, so that this... that cover needs to be strong. How about that one? Forty hard. Is that a strong cover? Am I on the right track with that, Manly? You're you're on the right track. You're headed in the right direction. Okay, okay, all right. Good to know. Good to know. Okay, okay. Now, what you about this? You asked for honesty, so. Girl, I love it. I love it. Now, for this one, this is not my book, but I just had him on the show. Last gift of the Magi. Does that cover do it for you? It's a Christmas fable about a camel and how he learns to find his purpose. Is that something it, you immediately want to read from that cover? If if that's my genre, yeah. I mean, it fits the genre. It's got to fit the genre. Okay. Yeah. yeah so that's, fits that's, the genre. that's a beautiful movie cover, book cover. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They probably paid some good money to have that designed. Yeah. All right. Startup Nation, I went under fire for you. <laughs> So that you can learn from my failures. That's You're funny. welcome. <laughs> now, Sherry, that's, that's really cool, you know? I'm having fun with it. But, man, this is what we need to be willing to do in business, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Is to say, hey, here's what I created. What do you think? Am I on track? Am I off track? Do I pivot? Do I shift? Rather than just be like bouncing the idea off the mirror and saying, oh, this is what the world wants and needs. And I'm running with it. And we don't get any pushback or feedback from people. And we run the wrong direction and then it doesn't pan out. We fail. What's the point? The back cover is also important and you have to have a strong hook. So once you've hooked them on the cover, you got to flip it over. And on Mm -hmm. the back, it's got to be a super strong hook. Can you give us an example from one of your authors that has worked? Yes. Uh, We wrote a book about a gal who was human trafficked. She Mm. was labor trafficked out of Taiwan. And her name is Sherry Ho. And so we started the back hook with the night she ran away. So it's like, you know, Thursday was the only day I went to the trash. I looked around to see blah, 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 blah. So it was all about her escape. Mm -hmm. And so we grabbed them at the end about, you know, the night she escaped on the back. Okay. So you're actually pulling a hook like out of the book and putting on the back cover to immerse the the reader immediately in right they're like okay now i I gotta know what happens but you don't want to give away the farm so it's enough to hook them to keep reading 
And then after you do that, you know, the bio needs to be very interesting. Too many people are like, I live in Southern California. I have a husband and three wonderful children and blah, 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 blah. Uh, boring, right? So you want to make it really interesting for your bio, depending on your goal and objective. If you're a PhD and it's, you know, or business, you know, yeah, keep it more, you know, expert. But mm -hmm. if it's more fun, then, you know, you could jazz that up. And then the last thing that nobody really talks about is you open up the book and it's the table of contents. Mm -hmm. So that table of contents, each chapter should have a hook for media. So each one should be good uh, as a standalone hook for the media. I've heard that little secret before. Um, and I've tried to do that. It's not always easy. No, it's um, not always easy, but. But yeah, like five steps to break your porn habit forever without shameful relapses. Oh, that's good. Right that's for really dudes. Good. That's yeah. great. That's good. Okay, good, good. So that, that's a that, two thumbs up. <laughs> yay, we got a two thumbs up after I got my face smashed in with a hammer. <laughs> But but startup nation, I want to give you that example, right? Because that's what you well, that's how your table of contents wants to look. Like if the media saw this as a standalone, would it be like a great title for an article? That chapter, would it be something they would want to invite you on to learn more about and make you the expert? Because they may be doing a news feature on that or a series on that topic. They start googling things. Your whatever table of contents comes up and they're like, who's this person? Oh, they wrote a book. Oh, let's bring them on the show. We need someone. Mm -hmm. And right there you mm -hmm. could get featured. Is that correct, Sherry? Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's why it's important to have the hooks. I also think that it's important. It's not, the books are not always about the money. I have one author who is from El Salvador. She lives in Los Angeles. Her name is Dr. Evelyn Garcia. And she's been asked to speak. Now, you're not going to believe this sentence I'm about to say. She's been asked to speak to the United Nations on her book on forgiveness. Hmm. Go figure. So there, there's something on the other side of your yes to God on writing a book that you may not know yet. But it takes obedience. So I think some people are dreamers and they keep wanting to tell people like, the fun is in telling people, oh, I want to write a book. But when it comes to rolling up their sleeves mm -hmm. and actually doing it, mm -hmm. um, it's not as sexy. It's not as fun. So, it, you know, but there is something on the other side of your yes to God. If God is really calling you to write a book, there's something on the other side that you may not even know about. One of our authors is was homeless for 20 years and now he's a college professor. And so his was from Park Bench to Park Avenue one man's journey out of homelessness. And so he's now been asked to be on a state board of, for homelessness for the state of California. Those things open up for you. So it's not all about the money. It's about the opportunities on the other side that can open up for you as well. Mm. Startup Nation, are you getting inspired right now? Are you getting your own ideas, new ideas, new possibilities? for your book or maybe even for your products or services and how to position them because you want to position them like you're positioning a book to a, to a new audience, new readers. You want to get them to dig in. They got to know more. So it's all marketing at the end of the day, right? Yeah. How do you, how do you present yourself to the world? And if God's calling you to do something and you got this bigger calling deep underneath and you're like, why isn't it getting traction? Like it's from God. I'm doing the work. I'm messy. I'm in the kitchen. I'm baking the cake. There's a mess everywhere. Like, but why isn't it taking off? Why don't people want it? Sherry, can you address that? I have a really good example of that. Uh, we launched Sherry Ho's book and I launched it at Cal State Fullerton in their mean concert hall, huge concert hall. We had 375 people in attendance. What I did is I didn't do just the book launch, I created an event. So it was a human trafficking awareness event based on the arts. So I had spoken word, I had rappers, I had dancers, I had everybody in the arts. I had somebody that did spoken word and painted at the same time and then flipped the paint upside down and, you know, really cool stuff. And we were all excited. It's like, this is it, she's taking off, this is it. You know, this is everything, you know. Had 35 vendors from different nonprofits there, um, you know, for awareness, everything. 
And then afterwards, it, it was just this lull. And it's like, what the heck, God? You know, this was supposed to be it. What's going on? And that's been four years ago. And probably two weeks ago, God said, now, now, go now. Now's the time. So I'm now, we, we had landed a deal with a publishing company in Taiwan to translate it in Taiwan. And he said, now's the time. Which is wild because in the political arena right now, that is not something I would be running towards right now of what's happening over there. But for some reason, it's God's timing right now. And we're going towards it with everything we've got. I have to ask you a personal question on that. That's fascinating. First off, how do you know with certainty that you heard God and it's just not your own mind telling you go now? Uh, it goes back to that wilderness. I, I, I hear God now. I mean, I used to be in church in this charismatic church where it's like, okay, speak God for your servants are listening. And my mind would be like, am I hearing you? Am I not? What are you saying? Am I not hearing you? And I'd be so spazzy. And I think just through that, the wilderness season, I, I hear his voice. I know what his voice sounds like. Sometimes it is a whisper. Sometimes it's loud. Um, but I take the time every day as much as I can to get in to his word and just listen and just journal and ask him questions and then just sit silently until I hear something and then I just start writing. So what I really like about what you're saying, Sherry, is you're not only doing this for you and for your business, but you're sitting with God in silence asking him um, about what to do with your clients. Absolutely. And me and Amanda, Amanda and I, we pray over the numbers. So it's like, what should our offer be? How much are we charging? What's the payment plan look like? Like we pray over the numbers as well, which is something new for us. So you're including God in all the details of your business. Absolutely. Absolutely. Startup Nation, that's confronting. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to put the details of your business and your finances in God's hands, in his control, and release your white knuckle grip? I don't know. I'm just saying it's, it could be scary. Now, do you have any uh, like hopeful message for us, Sherry, of doing this and it works out? Um, we're still in process with Sherry Ho, but I can tell you ever since I turned my attention to Taiwan, all hell's broken loose. I mean, my car, my kid flipped his car on the freeway, got the midnight phone call from his son-in-law that he went in the hospital and sliced his finger, like just thing after thing after thing, which... It sounds weird, but it always tells me I'm on the right track because it's like when I focused in on that, it's like all of this stuff came against me, like bam, 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 bam. It's like, oh, I know where that's coming from. And it's kind of a weird way of encouragement that I'm on the right track. So uh, hit me up in a, you know six months, a year, and I'll tell you where we're at. But uh, yeah. Okay. So for all you believers listening out there, what Sherry is sharing with us from a spiritual lens is that when darkness starts to attack with a vicious vengeance, like out of nowhere, and it's just like a ripple effect, typically that means you're headed in the right direction. Otherwise, why would it be attacking you? What is it trying to exactly. stop you from doing? Exactly. Right? It's probably God's going to open up something big. I was reading an autobiography of a uh, um, the foundress of EWTN, which is the largest Catholic media company in the world worth billions, right? And uh, how did this little nun, she's like a Mother Teresa nun, how did she build this entire empire? And every time before God uh, elevated and did something big and tons of money came in and whatever, she went through physical suffering out of the blue. All of a sudden, she'd trip and fall, break her hip, and she'd be on crutches for like six, eight weeks, debilitated as she's going to all the meetings. Like, why? Why is this happening? But it was always a precursor, and she finally trained herself to learn that, oh, when something bad happens to me, that means God's about to lift me up or lift up the, the work I'm doing. And this is like a contradiction to the world. Right? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But in the spiritual realm, this is how God chooses to do it, to increase. So anyway, thank you for sharing that, Sherry. We went yeah. deeper than I thought on the show. We were here talking about <laughs> books and publishing, and then we're talking about suffering and God and faith and trust and hope. But you know what? 
If you're a believer, this should all be integrated in your life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It really should. Your business, your faith, your family, all of it, come on, bring it together. Whole and yeah. complete, right? Because that's how it shows up, isn't it? They all get right. messy. They right. all intertwine. They overlap. They don't say, excuse me, are you ready for me now? You know, like they don't do that. They don't have courtesy, right, with each other. They're, they're all together. All right. So we're speaking with Sherry Ward. Um, she's the founder of Square Tree Publishing. She works specifically with Christian authors like yourself um, that are either just getting going or maybe have a few books under your belt and you really want to take it next level. Maybe she's your gal. Maybe she can help you. Um, Sherry, we're about to enter my favorite part of the show. Welcome to the hustle round. I'm going to ask you 10 quick fire questions. You'll have about three seconds to answer each. Don't overthink it. It's just for fun. Are you ready? I am ready. What's your favorite thing about owning your own business? I love the creativity and building things from scratch. Yeah. What's your least favorite thing? Uh, learning how to step away. (laughs) <laughs> I, be- I believe we're all struggling. <laughs> we're all struggling with something at any given moment of our life. It's just part of the human condition. What are you currently challenged with right now, either professionally or personally? Um, I've done the hustle and the grind for decades. Mm. And my new season is learning ease and flow. Because I feel like that's what Jesus did. You know, he didn't, he, all these crowds, but he never was hustling. No, he worked in ease and flow. So I'm, that's my new thing this year. Yeah. It was uh, shifting from self-reliance to God reliance is really where that ease and flow comes and the grind is lost hustle. What are you most afraid of? I am most afraid of, you know, this company has done so well and taking off that it's going to end up like the other ones. (laughs) <laughs> no doom and gloom girl come on <laughs> you know why it's not going to end up like the other ones all right tell me do tell because you're doing it completely different and you're fully trusting god in this one where maybe yeah. you were lacking in trust in the previous ones true yeah. or true uh 100 percent. okay so there you go there's no way yeah. it can go the same what secret fear do you have about people that I'll dump all my time, energy, and money in them and they'll walk away. Yeah. You know, I think God, that's probably God's secret fear that he'll give us all this love and everything and then we'll reject him anyway. Mm-hmm. What did you spend way too much time doing your first year in business? Chasing the wrong client. Mm hmm. Big time. What do you wish you had learned sooner in business? Hmm. Getting an honest, reputable mentor. Yeah. It's a game changer for your business and life. 100%. 100%. I agree. What's a new habit you're going to create? Creating margins and fun for me. Okay. What's a bad habit you're going to break? Not working so much. (laughs) You got to enjoy the 500 grand, okay? Let's go. (laughs) Pick three words to describe who you are now. Confident, honest, and real. Pick three words to describe who you were your first year in this business. Poverty mindset, floundering, scared. Whoa. And last question. If you could come back to life after you die, look your family and friends in the eye and give them only one piece of advice about true success, real success. What would you say to them? Listen to what God's telling you and stay the course no matter what's happening in your circumstances. Got it. I thought you were going to say, listen to what God's telling you and stay the F out of his way. <laughs> that's not that's no. not where she was going, no, people. No, no. <laughs> we, we co-partner with him. So that's he want, right. He wants us part of it. You know, I'm not sure that's good, good uh, uh, advice, business advice for God. It's like, you really want to partner with me? No. I, you know how many bad choices I make, Father? Come on. What are you thinking here? All right. Um, so we are speaking with Sherry Ward. Sherry, give Startup Nation a homework assignment for this week specific uh, to your industry and writing. 
I would say spend time with God and listen however you hear from him, because everybody hears from him different. Some see things, some hear things, some sense things, and just go with it. Start going in that direction. And the more that you focus in on that, the more it will expand and grow of you hearing from him. Mm, so true. So true. Put in the time, start Mesh. Put in the time. Uh, if you enjoyed this show, please go write a five-star review for Sherry Ward. Sherry Ward. Uh, you can do that at Apple Podcasts, Stitcher.com, or First100K.com. First100K.com. If we like what you write, uh, I'll read it live on the show um, and give you a little shout-out like I'm about to do for Eggscapes. Handle egg. E-G-G, scapes, egg scapes. Uh, Five Star wrote, so needed this podcast. I've often felt that inspiration is one of the greatest gifts one person can give another. After all, inspiration gives us both energy and direction. Joseph Warren's superpower is he's inspirational. He draws from his guests their best wisdom and then packages it so that when our time with him is over, we leave feeling energized, understood, and encouraged. Wow. That's awesome. Thank you, Egg Escapes. Uh, and I'm so happy that God's able to speak through me, to you, through my guests, to you, because uh, that's the point. We're all in this together, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Sherry Ward, where does Startup Nation go to find out more about you? Well, I have two opportunities. So if you would like to write a book and find out more information, you could go to squaretreepublishing.com. And we are having a Facebook challenge in January for the new year. And that is callingoutthebook.com. Callingoutthebook.com. All right. We're speaking with Sherry Ward. Sherry, thank you for being on your first 100K. I wish you God's love, peace, and joy in your life. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.